What is going on? I am at one of my favorite places here in Portland. It's right under the St. John's Bridge, uh, Cathedral Park. It's an absolutely stunning day today. I'm here with my friend, my dear friend, Terea. I've known her for years. She's already been on my channel. We've actually already toured this vehicle, so why am I touring it again? because we're going to get some severe insight from a professional that's been doing this for years. And we're gonna talk about what she's actually done since the last time she's been on my channel, right? Yeah. Upgrades, changes. changes. Solving, all sorts of stuff. All sorts of stuff. You definitely wanna listen to her. We're gonna get right into this video right now. Before this really informative video gets started, I need to talk to you guys about a device that's called Waggle and it's made for van lifers, marketed as RVers, but let's call what it actually is, and we are all just van lifers out there. I like that term a little bit better. <laughs> but if you've tuned into my channel recently, you may know that I have an upcoming puppy on its way, and Waggle is designed as a GPS device. Now, if you've also been following my channel, you will know that my van was recently stolen and recovered, but, I could have got it back a lot sooner if I had a device like this. So this is kind of like a double whammy for me because not only is Waggle a GPS device, but Waggle also does a lot of other things like alerts you if your power system goes out inside of your van. It can also detect a temperature change inside of your van. So if you have to leave your furry friend inside of your van, and the temperature gets too cold or too hot, then it'll send you an alert through your text. What's amazing about this device right here, it works off of the Verizon 4G network, Wi-Fi needed or anything like that. So go to mywaggle.com to check out this device if you are interested. I have one now. I'll be doing a lot more work with Waggle in the future because I do really like this and they do focus on your pet being safe inside of your van. By the way, this is the device. <laughs> I've had it down in my other hand this whole time and I haven't even shown you guys. There are some national parks out there that do not allow animals to roam around with you or hiking trails or something like that. So you may have to leave your furry friend inside of your vehicle. And that is where Waggle will come in. So go check out the link below. Let's get back to Torea so she can kind of teach everybody, including myself, a better way to camp and you know van life you're an camper. expert camper yeah experienced experienced yeah backcountry enthusiast last time you're on the video you yeah. didn't have this wonderful lady with you no this is my pup moxie and moxie, she's a sweetheart she's a plot hound and she we nickname her the monster she's our hiking backcountry companion uh and it's, it's her van oh I should be really clear about this and admit <laughs> she is the queen. Mm -hmm. This is her chariot. So yeah, it's her van. So Terea, tell us uh, what you've got here. Your husband Jeremy isn't here today. Right. Um, he, you have to drop him off at some sort of appointment. That's right. This is not just you and Moxie. This is no, you, correct. Jeremy, and Moxie. Yeah, so it's the three of us when we go adventure. It's always the three of us. What do you have van-wise? Who made it? Yeah. And we'll go into that. This is a 2018 Sprinter 144 base build. We had the interior done by outside van when we first got it. And we also knew that we wanted certain types of features and upgrades and things that outside van just didn't quite offer at the time. This was several years ago and they've advanced a lot as most builders have. And so we really wanted to build this out to be a over landing vehicle, but also a comfort, like sleep in a nice, nice area, not on a little backpacking mattress. Pack. Yeah, and enclosed too, because a lot of overlanders are typically in tents. Exactly. Usually. Well, can we step aside so we get the noise maybe to kind of yeah. slow down on us? Just hang out in Moxie's. Yes, I know, sweetheart. We're about to enter your home. Yeah. You got this from Outside Van. Yeah. 2018, this is the last year of the older body style. Yes. We, are you yes. upset about this? Uh, actually, no. We're okay. not upset about it. So we really wanted to get a 2018 four-wheel drive 144. Yeah. But when we were looking, that was when Mercedes was shifting their manufacturing from Germany to the United States. A whole bunch of builders and Amazon were like snapping up all the sprinters and I couldn't find anything. Literally had called probably, I would say 25 dealers to try and find one. Couldn't find it. 
and I started calling different van builders to see if they had them. An outside van had this van. Part of the reason why we went with outside van, plus, I mean, they were known at the time for a very high quality build, and we knew that we weren't gonna DIY it. Let's just be real clear on that. Right. <laughs> Just gonna DIY it. You, you were right? like, no, this is way too much of an undertaking. Exactly. Uh, do you have lights in here we can turn on? I've got these lights, I've got party lights. You got party lights. lights. Just so we can uh, we can see what's going down. And you're actually sitting on Moxie's bed. Well, this well, is not what bad, we call it jump seat. The jump seat for Moxie. This Mox. is the jump seat. So when we're, tr we're en route, she sits here and usually when we're on like a four-wheel drive road she sits here because it's the most stable spot for her to be but this is like she'll sit on this pad and and this pad here and she hangs her head out the window you know you mentioned earlier that you do a lot of overlanding yeah a lot of your friends because i know you personally like have like land cruisers and jeeps and that kind of stuff like the fun yeah. stuff are you the only one that shows up with a van usually <laughs> usually we're the only ones that show up with a van and a lot of times we get asked like how did you get that here? So would you say that vans shouldn't be going where some other vehicles are going, like like the like the Jeeps of the world? I would say you gotta know the limitations, right? You gotta understand what the limits are of the vehicle and what it can and can't do. Um, if you are gonna take a van into the overland country and like really start doing some difficult rated trails, you're gonna wanna do some training, some recovery training, so that you understand not only how to recover the vehicle, but what the limits are of the vehicle so you can judge the terrain that you're getting into because if you're gonna end up on a road where your van is uncapable and you don't know how to recover yourself you it's can be, gonna be a long walk back that and you could, you'll be out there a while exactly yeah exactly it's not fun so you gotta be off grid well prepared with food well prepared with water like all those things you got to really take all that into consideration but built this specifically to go overland it's a pretty decent four-wheel drive vehicle it's not the best out there so you have to understand that you're not going to make it to all the locations as in four-wheel drive is not the best but it's one of the better four-wheel drive vans oh by far right and this this vehicle surprises us almost every time we go out like you said to me off camera you're not going to go do the rubicon trail definitely not doing the <laughs> rubicon trail right so you got to understand the ratings and understand you know what your clearance is and what you know what your wheels can do like we don't have what is it called the sway bar we don't have a disconnectable sway bar like, right i didn't even know that existed until we went out with our friends with land cruisers how much damage have you done to your undercarriage <laughs> <laughs> knock on wood not that much okay uh, i know you did one thing pretty significant oh yeah, it was pretty significant um we were going out with our friends with land cruisers right and they took us on a pretty rocky trail uh we were like oh no problem we've got a front skid plate this is fine until you hear the scrape in the back of the van and we're like oh. rear differential yeah 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 we cut our rear diff and uh bent the housing and it started to leak so we ended up having to get that repaired and then shortly after that we ended up getting a van compass rear diff skid plate do you have a lift on this we do yeah so that was one of the first things that we decided to do is get a lift and a suspension tune by agile off-road at the time agile and van compass were like two of the best in the business right they probably still are they still are yeah um and we decided to do the agile kit because they were frankly closer to us you've got the outside van you've got a agile lift and is it the rp package improvement ride package. improvement package yep. i had to work out that acronym i have to say i didn't think i would notice anything oh you notice but this van is squirrely without it off camera we were talking about the technology how it's advancing so quickly with van life yes now van compass has a i believe it's called the 4.5 which is now not manual it's automatic uh yeah so it's like and that just came out and yeah. it's crazy it's only been a couple years right what we've seen is in the last couple years massive innovation for a lot of different things it's great because it's really helping solve some of those problems that we've run into along the way in the last couple years that brings me to my next question where i'm not bad mouthing anybody in this entire video i'm not saying anything negative about any company i think outside van does make a quality product yes. however approaching 2022 would, if you were to order another van, would it be from outside? Probably not. Okay. Um, and the only reason why I say that, and like like you're saying, 
we think they do really quality work. Right. Um, our needs just aren't matching 100% for what Outside Band is delivering, right? So we would probably do something different and maybe either use another outfitter, but we're, I mean, I have to admit, we're already talking about maybe this isn't the long-term overlanding vehicle that we're gonna stick with. You retrofitted a lot on this. Oh yeah. And we're gonna get into that now. So Outside Van did all of your cabinetry. Uh, your color scheme was done by you, you picked yes. it. Yes, so yeah. I did the color scheme and the design of all the different surfaces. They did the, the this shelf okay. here. They did the cabinetry, they did the galley. They did this storage space that I'm sitting on now. We designed two different lagoon mount points for the table. So we have one here, and then we have one here where we stow the table. Can you show me that table? Because I think yeah, it's beautiful. This is not the table that Outside Van built for us because I spied this company. They're San Diego based, right? Yep. What's their name again? San Diego Urban Timber. That's right. So this is beautiful. This, this is, is actually what I want to do my like for my yeah, like people, my clients. Yeah. This is what I want to just do in my shop and then just sell them. Yeah. This is reclaimed olive wood. Olive wood. Olive wood. And then uh, we got to choose the colors for the, the epoxy that went into the... This is not yes. a cheap table. No. <laughs> no. I mean, yes, I want to do overland stuff and I want to be off-road and dirty and all of that stuff. Um, I also have an eye for design and so... I like well, playing around with the design and making sure that aesthetically it's also pretty cool. You know, I'm gonna call a spade a spade and this is why you and I are friends, because we're both bougie. <laughs> Just saying. I like nice things. I like nice things. That, that is the best way to put it. I like nice things. I do. I like, I like nice like, things. I would rather have fewer things as long as they're nice. It's exactly. That's it. Outside van, like these window coverings are outside van, but some of the other window coverings are not. And this isn't. This is definitely not. This is the screen door. This is um, made by probably a, a company that I got introduced to recently that I am falling in love with. They're called Roloff. They're out of Canada. One of the reasons why I love it is that this side is magnetic. So the magnetic oh. door is here. Okay. And it's super easy to get in and out and it auto closes. So, oh, that's a nice magnet too. Yeah. They also make a couple different styles, I believe, right? They make well they make custom styles if you're having them custom do it for you you send them pictures from the inside of your van and the outside of the opening and then they will custom fit it so if you have like a galley here mm -hmm. they will actually make it so that it goes around your galley what did you have before this that you i consider you an expert van wise this is number two Okay. This is our second van. Originally got into a 2002 Euro van that had a Winnebago build because that's what they had in the 2002 range. What we found ourselves doing is going increasingly further and further out, rougher and rougher dirt roads. And we took that van where it should not have been taken. <laughs> that van had a propane tank mounted on the bottom. Oh, did you puncture it? Uh, we didn't puncture it, but we almost knocked it off twice. That was really like when we were ready to sell that van, we had two requirements. It's got to be, whatever we get into has got to be four wheel drive and there's got to be a window for Moxie. And, and how long did you have the Eurovan for? We had the Eurovan for, I think two and a half years. You must have learned a ton from having that van. Oh yeah. <laughs> the capability of the van, two wheel drive doesn't necessarily cut it all the time. It brings me to an interesting point that, um, you and Jeremy both love uh, winter camping, which we is like another reason why you have a 4x4. Yeah, we like the cold. And that's nothing wrong with that. That's great. No, yeah. Uh, which is one of the reasons why you have a 4x4. Yep. How is it winter camping versus like what everybody else does from like April to October camping? You really want to make sure that your van is going to be four seasons capable. So and what do you mean by that? Insulation is key. You definitely need ins insulated walls and flooring if you can help it. You have to have some kind of heat system. Unless so, you want to freeze to death. But, what um, do you have for heat in here? So we've got a Webasto. Um, the output of the Webasto is here. The actual operations of the Webasto are under here. That was installed by outside, I believe. That was installed by outside van. So that was part of the initial install is to put in the Webasto because it's a diesel sort. We wanted them to do the tap on the fuel tank and all of that stuff. So they put in the Webasto system here. There's a lot of like uh, pros and cons to having a heated floor system. Oh. And you don't have a heated floor in here. No. We but 
you do have these guys that you just got. Yeah, here's what we learned about. So heated flooring, let me just start with heated flooring and the like radiant floor systems that we see these days. That didn't exist when we built this van. No. We were just, just being developed. Well, you met me when I was installing the VLT, the Van Life Tech System. Yes. And that was one of the first, if not the first in the game. The handful, yeah. You could count on your one hand how many were out there. How right? many were out there on the road? And you, your friend Steve had one. Yes. And I got one. We you didn't even have that as an option. Because we love to snowshoe, cross-country ski, go hiking in the snow, and do a lot of, like, winter activity, the thing that we noticed is that we can have that Webesto turned all the way up. It's like 90 degrees up here, but we still have frostbite on our toes down here. Mm -hmm. So we we tried extra like carpet coverings, extra rugs, slippers, wool socks. Like it didn't matter. You're still getting frostbite on your toes. And then finally these guys came out and what they've done is they've put a little bit of cushion and a bit of insulation in these mats and now you can walk barefoot. Who, is, who are these this guys? Is, sorry, these guys are in Habit Design. And I've had them on my channel as well. Yes. Uh, Brian and John, John right? Yeah. The two main guys. They're yeah. awesome. Yeah, they're super awesome. And what I love about them, they cover all of the flooring space. Yep. So the Well, they have an option to do that. They have an option. You can choose. And even the front, actually, they too. They designed it to be so precise in this van that these mats aren't going to move. They like, can, they can be they taken can, out, right. We can absolutely take them out to clean them, but they're not gonna slide around. And them. most important, they're Moxie approved. Uh, Moxie approved <laughs> and Moxie dog nail proof. Dog nail, that's, that's what I was getting at, is the paws, yes, the scratching. The paws and the, yeah, she's rough on the van. Your power system was actually retrofitted. This is how I met you. Yes. You were just, you didn't like the offerings that Outside Van had, if I'm saying that correct. At the, yeah, at the time, when we built this van with Outside Van, they were just barely getting into lithium ion feel that their options were fitting with what we knew that we would want, right? Mm -hmm. We've got an induction stove. We've got, I've got a kettle that draws 1500 watts. Beautiful kettle, by the way. Thank you. We knew that we were gonna be a heavy electric draw. We also knew that we wanted to do it almost all on solar. We wanna protect the environment a lot. We really love electric vehicles. We're disappointed that the Sprinter was a diesel at the time, right? We still don't have electric Sprinters that can do overland stuff, so. I'm glad you said they can do overland stuff because they exactly. technically have them, technically, but. They have them, but right now they're around the town kind of things. Let's be real, very short range, right? Uh, Terea, guys, is another one of my electric buddies. Yes. Um, she's got a Tesla. I've got the Rivian on order, which I think I almost convinced you to buy one. <laughs> we'll see what happens in okay. the future. Okay, okay. It's important to us that if we were gonna use significant electricity that we were gonna use the sun to charge it up. When we find an epic campsite, oh, you're there. we like to stay for four or five days. So you have, I'm assuming you have um, alternator capability of charging. Yes. You have shore power, but have you ever plugged in? <laughs> Only at home. Okay, fair enough. And then you have a phenomenal 500 watt panel. Yes. That's walkable. It's it's our rooftop deck, so we like to take in sunsets and sunrises. So okay. that's where we take those in if we're in camp and we're not wanting to hike to some place to do it. We really wanted a, the maximum amount of solar that we could put on the roof possible. With the 500 watt panel, we could get more wattage for a shorter amount of space, smaller amount of space. I hope that made it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well. That was pretty good, yeah. So, um, and yeah, I uh, have you guys slept up there? No, not yet. Okay. But one of these days we're going to camp in some place that's hot enough to do that and sleep up there all night. The owners of that, that, that provided that for you, um, uh, Tiny Watt Solar, yes. I know that they've slept up on their deck. Yes, they have. Tiny Watt Solar not only did your deck, but they also did your retrofit of your right. so batteries. We wanted to make sure that we had a capable enough system that could keep us in power, even if we were in cloudy conditions, right? So in winter, you're not going to get that much sun. Right. And we wanted to be able to stay in camp for at least four days without having to recharge it by the alternator. Mm -hmm. So we got the solar panel and we got enough battery storage through Tiny Watt Solar. So They've really put in a bomber. So what do you, system. I don't even know, how many amp hours is it? Do you know? 300. So it's Which, not the top out there, but it's enough for us. Here's Our the thing days. though, that's what people don't understand. The 300 is enough if you cook induction. If you're running an air conditioner, which you don't. We don't, we just travel north. You, tra <laughs> you travel into colder places. Colder places. Yeah, or, like or into climates. the mountains. Yeah. 
9,000 feet in the in the summertime is chilly. Is very chilly. You are sitting on your refrigerator. Yes. Which is really it's interesting an to me. Angle. It's, yeah. But you don't have it in a cabinet anywhere. You just yeah. are like, screw this. Yeah, I mean, it, it was interesting because when we were designing this galley, we could put in a vertical fridge over here. That's right? one of their offerings, right? That's one of their offerings. But then I wouldn't have a place to store stuff. Gotcha. So wanting a lot of storage basically meant that we were going to have to sacrifice having a fridge or we weren't ready to build a galley over here mm -hmm. at the time let's face it we had a budget we learned though from the eurovan mm. because we had an engel fridge in the eurovan a portable fridge like this that it was rock solid and so we actually enjoyed using it so this now doubles as our step to get up to the platform bed of course this is how Moxie gets up, but it's a fantastic fridge and we just love it because mm. it can handle all sorts of cambers and angles and you're not having to worry about it. I'm the type that I love less is more. So like not having this in a cabinet that you have to slide out and then open mm -hmm. is a two motion thing. Yeah. This is just one motion. I'm here. I'm opening it. Yeah. It also, you know, seating. It also Extra doubles seating. the seat. Yeah. So of course. yeah, we get a lot of use out of it. Was it your idea to have the complete pass? We knew that we would have various outdoor gear so like in the winter there's snowshoes down uh -oh. here in the summer uh oh easy access to the stuff mm -hmm. that was here and we also knew that the van sometimes doubles as a hauler <laughs> yes so we can haul stuff in what are you doing <laughs> she's like mom i'm done with this Speaking of Moxie, you have underneath there is, I thought, I don't know what I thought that was earlier, but uh, what is that? That's another angle fridge. Okay. But we use that one as a freezer. So, so awesome. she eats raw food and we keep it frozen. And so when we're on long trips, we needed enough capacity for it. Um, and so we run that one as a freezer. Okay. And also in the summer, we stock it with popsicles and we're the favorite people in camp. Yes, you are. So you got a fridge, you got a freezer, you've yep. got this table, you got the retrofitted uh, tiny watt solar kit. Yep. What's your water? Our water is over here. We've okay. We've got um, 18 gallon capacity water, a three gallon boiler for hot water that runs off of the same system as the Webasto. So the Webasto boiler is in there and that's what heats up our hot water. Storage for stuff all the stuff all the stuff this that's is a light packing trip for you this is a very light packing trip normally that's a lot packed. Of our adventure gear yeah. right i know that yeah. bed wise i believe it's a queenish yeah it's queen it's yeah. actually slightly bigger than a queen it's a little bit wider than a queen you got the flares yes we got the flares because my husband's a little bit taller than me so he sleeps in the back side because that's a little bit longer yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's 5'10", and if he, because the flare's a little bit wider in the back, if he's in that spot, he's good. he can actually sleep without touching a wall. Nice. Pretty comfortable and until the monster comes upstairs and joins us. Uh, you did mention that you, um, this is probably not the, your end of your van life journey as regards to buying another. I, I don't know if Jeremy knows this. No, he knows. Okay. <laughs> It's not a surprise, surprise Jeremy. Yeah, surprise. <laughs> I mean, maybe electric, maybe in the future. I don't know. We'll see. I would love to see electric vehicles show up like in a commonplace setting mm -hmm. in the overland world. Like, I would love oh, I, to see that. And we're starting to see vehicles push that envelope. It's probably a couple years down the road. I think, obviously, I think the iteration that's going to happen is the overlanding world as in truck will happen first and then van will happen second. I think charging stations are happening more and more at trailheads. Mm -hmm. We're going to see it. We're going to see, see it. it. And so I, I think it's great that we're pushing those kinds of innovations and technologies. I'm excited for the, what the next few years are going to bring. Yeah. Um, because these last few years have been like, holy crap, I didn't know all this was possible. And now we're getting even further. Uh, do you want to go outside and, yeah, and show anything? Yeah, let's go outside and I'll show, show you a couple things. We already talked about your suspension yeah. upgrade. Because of your solar array and because it's a walkable deck, I believe you have to have custom brackets made. Yeah. I mean, originally we didn't even know if we wanted an awning. So we went without it for a while. Um, we didn't use it on the Euroman at all. Um, what's your problem? This one's struggling. What's your problem? Try again. Try again. Go up. There you go. So we didn't know if we would want it. 
And the difference for us was we didn't quite think through the whole like fixed position solar panel versus portable solar panel that you can place just about anywhere. So which is what you had in the Euro? Which is what we had in the Euro van. So parking the van in the shade to keep it cool versus parking it in the sun to get maximum solar charge. Now you want shade. I know in the front you have your ultimate get out of I need help the situation. The get out of jail card? Yeah. This is the get out of jail card called a Warren Winch. Yeah. Um, Which bumper did you go with? Uh, to use it. This is the stock bumper with Ad, so Agile put in this recovery kit okay. for us, so they put in the winch. They have their reinforced bumper behind the okay. factory bumper. And so they actually put this together to have it look the way that it is. Beautiful. Yeah. And then I know you have something on in the back that you added. So for recovery gear, we didn't want to have the Max Tracks inside or the shovel inside. Have you even used these? I have never had to use these. <laughs> okay. I've never had have you used your winch? Not for us. So you pulled other people out. We've pulled other people out. Well, that's nice of you. That's nice. <laughs> Thanks. It also gives gives us some practice using the winch, so that's always good. And you have it's a huge a Wii Boost. This is a very huge antenna for the Wii Boost. My husband found this bracket. Uh huh. So it just flips up when you need it. Nice. And did you? And then we sew it like this, so we're not tearing the tree branches off with the Wii Boost antenna. And did you say this was owl? This is an owl. Sherpa carrier. Right. And so what's great about this is that we can take these off, put the bike rack on, ah. haul the bikes when we want to. So we love the the configurability of this Sherpa carrier. And you might be doing something else here. We haven't decided Maybe, yet. Possibly. We haven't, yeah. yeah. We might add a little bit. Yeah, Maybe we'll see. Maybe a little extra storage. We'll see. And then yeah. on the side, like I said, guys, it's the Flatline Van Co. Yep. And then our walkable deck. It's all dirty. What are you talking Like this is, you know, it's... <laughs> It's gotta be dirty. It's supposed to be dirty. It's supposed to be dirty. It's so great seeing you again. Yeah, I'm happy to share our learnings and things like that I with wanted... other people because I think it's important that you have to understand that you're probably gonna be tweaking things throughout your ownership of. It's been like two years like since this. we since we did our first tour mm -hmm. together. Yeah, and we're gonna we yeah. always have a project list. We're always tweaking things. We're always trying to make it better. Torea, till next time. We're I need to do an adventure with you. I want to take, let's take the Rivian out when I get it. Okay, let's do it. All right, cool. Okay. All right, see you later. Ciao.